Hey, hope you're doing all right. This is Chris, and in this video, we're going to go over how to create a reusable skeleton component using styled components. So my current setup right now, I've got uh, just a basic fetch to the SpaceX uh, API. This one doesn't require a key or anything. Um, and then just setting our rockets array to the data that's coming in. Uh, since this API uh, request is pretty quick, I just added a set timeout so we can actually see our little loading situation. If it's loading right now, we're just re returning a paragraph tag with the text loading, and this is what we're going to solve for. And then uh, when uh, we're not loading, then uh, we're populating a list of rocket names here. The only other adjustment that I've made is in the app.css file where I just have centered everything and put a height of 100 because we're not worried about style or anything here. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in. Right now, what we're looking at is when we fetch our data, you can see loading up here and then our data populates. But in order to make this a little bit more appealing, we're gonna add uh, a loading skeleton. So we'll have some flexibility with this. Uh, the first step is we're going to create a new file, and we'll call it skeleton. At the top, we're going to import styled from styled components. I should mention that in our package JSON, I've already installed um, styled components, and I just uh, created this app with a, a npx create react app. So in our skeleton component, We're gonna say const skeleton. It'll take in some props. And then we are going to have our styled skeleton, which we haven't made yet. And uh, let's actually return this. So I'm gonna cut this return. So we have to actually create this styled skeleton. So let's go ahead and do that. At the top, we'll say const styled skeleton is equal to style.div. We are going to pass in a width prop so this can be reusable. So using our styled components syntax, this lets us know that JavaScript is coming in. What we could do is pull out the props, but we're going to actually do some destructuring here, and we're going to pull out the width from our props. And we're going to set our width equal to the width that's coming in via props. We're going to do the same thing for height, where we'll destructure out the height. We'll do a little box shadow. And feel free to play around with any of this really, but um, these styles, this box shadow, um, any of these things that you see fit. We'll add a border radius of four pixels. And that should be good for now to get us started. Similar to how we destructured width and height off of the props coming into the styled skeleton, which we haven't yet passed in, we're going to do the same thing to the props coming into our actual skeleton component, which we'll use in our app.js file. So instead of grabbing props, we're going to destructure off our width and our height, and then we'll just pass those into our styled skeleton. So we'll set width the width being passed into our styled skeleton is the width that's getting passed into our skeleton component. And then same thing for height. And then we'll export default skeleton. So now we can use this. So if we go back to our app.js, we can import skeleton from same directory skeleton. 
And let's just pop this into our little loading here. So we'll add some improvements here. But for now, let's do skeleton with a width of, I don't know, 200 pixels and a height of, let's say, 20 pixels. And let's see how that looks. So if we flip back over to our app and we refresh, it's up here. So that's not super helpful, but we're starting to see some stuff. If I refresh again, there's our little loader. But we want that to come in here since we're having a list of items coming in. So let's go ahead and make a small tweak to this return here. So inside of our app, what we can do is we can say, we can cut out this unordered list and we can say, check if it's loading. If it is, we'll do something. If it's not, then we'll return that list. So if it is, we're gonna return the skeleton here. And we can get rid of this. So now that should at least be getting rendered in the same spot. And we can add a little bit of uh, extra goodness to it here in a minute. So flipping back over, I refresh, there it is. And then we have our list. But the problem is there's no motion. So when we're seeing a lot of um, loading skeletons, typically you have this nice little animation that kind of loops until the data has um, come in. But right now this is just a box. So this looks okay, I guess, but let's go ahead and add some animation to this. So back in our app, if we go over to skeleton.js, we're going to import one more thing. Uh, and this is a keyframes helper. So if you're familiar with keyframes in CSS, um, we, unlike in CSS where you write the keyframes directly in, in that CSS, we need to make a separate uh, variable that holds our keyframe animation and then pass it into our styled skeleton here. So let's call that, we can just say loading and we can say keyframes. And now it's all the same. So we'll say from, and we'll do left of uh, minus 200 pixels and to left 100%. And so now in our styled skeleton, we can add a couple of more um, things to make this useful. So first we're gonna make our position relative and we're doing this because we're making uh, use of the before pseudo selector. So we're gonna position that absolutely. And in order to position something absolutely, it needs a relative uh, parent. We're also gonna set the overflow to hidden so that we don't get any um, like weird sort of extraneous animation or uh, weird artifacts uh, populating outside of our little loading bars. So now what we can do, is we can say before, we can give it a content of just empty content. We'll do display block position absolute. We're going to start it off of the actual uh, like parent here by giving it a left of minus 200. And notice that this minus 200 matches this starting point for this animation of minus 200 pixels. We'll do top zero, a height of 100%, a width, you can kind of play around with this. I'll do 200 pixels. And then we'll give it a background of a linear gradient. So we'll say linear gradient, and it's going to go to the right. And we'll say uh, white at 0%, and then like a little kind of lighter gray at 50, and then back to white. 
at 100%. And then for our animation, we'll grab that loading variable from up top here. Again, kind of similar to what we did with our props where we're saying like, hey, here's some JavaScript coming in. So we're referencing that loading uh, keyframe up there. Uh, we can set it to a second. Um, I'll use ease in and out and then infinite will allow this to continue looping until this uh, skeleton disappears. So let's take a look at this, flip back over. So that's pretty, pretty subtle. Um, we can change the colors around a little bit. Let's kind of make this a little wacky. So let's do like, a, let's do like a red, blue and red. All right, so that's a little bit more, a uh, little bit more intense, but you can see kind of clearly what's going on here now. Notice though too, we have four list items, and if we want to make this a little bit more reusable, what we can do is we can pass in a prop, let's say number, and then from that number we can generate multiple uh, instances of that skeleton component. So let's make this a little bit more reusable. We're going to take in a number prop here. And then what we'll do is we'll say, uh, we're, we're going to get rid of this semicolon and then cut this skeleton component. So we're going to return and we're going to say, is there a number? If there is, then we'll create a new array where we're passing in that number coming in. So this is creating an array from the whatever number you pass in. So if I pass in the number five, it's going to make an array of five items. And then we could just map over that like normal. So we'll map and we'll say uh, the skeleton and the index. And we'll return and I'll paste back in my skeleton. And here we'll give it a, an a key of, we'll just do the index for now. So we have that, otherwise, we'll just return our regular styled skeleton uh, here. So this isn't gonna do anything yet because we're not yet passing in that number prop, so let's go ahead and do that. In our skeleton, we can do like number, and we'll say four. So now if I refresh that, so this looks okay. We can give it a little bit, maybe a little bit more space as well. So let's try uh, passing in that prop and we can say um, for our styled skeleton, just at the top here, we can say like margin bottom of like eight pixels. And so that way, just in case there are um, multiple instances of that skeleton, it'll have a little space. Cool, so now it looks pretty decent. Now we've got a little bit of, uh, of an indication that some data is coming in uh, and that people can relax. The app is working. It's just taking its time processing some data. So there are plenty of ways to extend off of this as well. You could pass in different props like shape, for example, and then, you know, if your if your shape prop is passed in as a circle, then you can adjust the width and height and the border radius and make it like nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine pixels, make it round, add padding, um, lots of different cool things that you can do with this, and that's one of the reasons I like styled components is because you get to use a little bit of JavaScript and some extra logic and don't have to always worry about. Um, adding different classes and toggling them on and off and that sort of thing. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the comments. And uh, other than that, thanks for watching. Have a good one.